I kind of struggled the first few days because I was brought here to do a marketing role. But, you know, first of all, I wanted to understand the technology and everything, which took me forever until I understood that I was just talking about the same customer who I was selling at times, the same customer who buys Omo, who buys a matchbox. So how do I package the different products and services that I'm selling to them so that they make sense to them and they resonate? And I think that was a moment that really delivered me. And I think from that particular point, I then said, whatever challenges that life throws my way, how do I use them to make myself a better person? Um, am I the best version of me, right, uh, in whatever it is that I'm applying myself to? And then also live with the freedom that sometimes you just live your life forwards and then you understand it backward later. You have a new role now at Safaricom, Chief Customer Officer. So what does that role entail and how do you feel about it? Well, there's this perception that the, the, the role was created for me. <laughs> It wasn't. It wasn't created for me. So Bob had the role, uh, and he had, uh, for for a while, been wanting to reorganize the company, right? And had already done his structure and all that stuff. Uh, but what happened is, uh, at that particular time when he wanted to do his announcement, it was also the same time that this whole issue with Tanzania did not work out because of the work permit. Um, and therefore, they went with the board through a process of identifying who would be the right candidate, and um, it was there. Um, I think for us, what are we trying to do? We, the customer is at the heart of everything we do, and um, and even that's why the, that's that's the role of that's why the role is named the way it is. It's the chief customer officer, um, looking at our customer journey end to end. Uh, what are their needs? Are we meeting their needs? Um, are we are we delivering the best kind of service that we can to them? When a customer is making a decision every day that I want to choose a mobile telecommunications provider, are they choosing us? There was a lot of hope. People didn't think that it was just Safaricom sending Sylvia. Uh, it was us exporting one of our best to Tanzania. Uh, it didn't work out. I'm sure you prepared so much for that role. How did you come back from that? Oh, I think uh, it, it just comes back to that whole thing of knowing who you are. I mean, I celebrate. I was very happy when I was appointed to go and be uh, MD uh, of uh, Vodacom Tanzania. And I, it was a great opportunity which I fully embraced. I mean, I did all my goodbyes from uh, Safaricom and said Kwaheri, and I was taking a big step to move to the next, uh, to move to that uh, new role. Um, but it didn't work out. Does it change who I am? No. Does it change my capability? No. Um, there are factors that are external to me that I cannot be able to control. And that's why I say in this life you have to learn to travel light and you have to know who you are because I can't take the baggage of somebody else and load it onto myself because I can't do anything about that. I can't change uh, what is Kenya, Tanzania perceptions to each other. Those are things that are beyond me. Um, at the end of the day, <clears throat> I know who I am. I know the value that I offer. I think it would have been a great opportunity for me to work with Vodacom and Vodacom to also work with me. Um, but I'm also grateful that um, the time that I've also spent in this company um, has not gone to waste. And that's the reason why it's also, uh, it, was, it was not difficult for me to be able to come back here. Many would argue because of your proximity to Bob Collimore, you effectively are the most powerful woman in Safaricom. Um, and they would ask, would the next step be you being the most powerful person in Safaricom? So I think the most powerful person in Safaricom is the customer who chooses us every day. I once attended a class, was it by Sunny Bindra, who said, you know, if the customer left you, you would never have, there would be no influence. The only person who brings money to Safaricom is a customer. The rest of us, whether we're employees, we're suppliers, we're vendors, even the regulator, everybody takes money out of Safaricom. So the person, the only person who brings money into the ecosystem is the customer. So I think the first thing is uh, the customer is the most powerful person. Um, I, do, I don't look at roles like that. I mean, I'm in a, in a position that helps me to be able to influence the strategy of the company. I'm in a position that helps me to be able to, to leave out... Um, the ambitions that are in the hope that are in the hearts of our customers. I'm in a position that can be able to create an organization that is more compassionate to the customers that we serve and just drive the whole narrative uh, of Kenya forward. Um, that is a leadership is a position of privilege. 
Let's talk about something else that you're really passionate about, and that's incorporating more women in uh, Safaricom's ecosystem. It's something that really has been a brainchild of yours here in Safaricom. What, what fruits have those efforts yielded? We went to do the stats. That was in, uh, I think, March 2017. We realized that only 2% of our vendors or suppliers were women. And if you look at the amount of... Um, uh, spent that we use as a company uh, because of the size of the company, whether it's be on our network. I mean, our, our uh, annual capex budget is about 35 billion. I mean, women don't have access to that because maybe they view this as a male uh, kind of a domain. They don't want to get into technology. They don't want to get into ICT. And I was so proud this year when we awarded our first big network contract to a um, woman-owned company, a lady called uh, Rebecca who, who runs a company called Fireside. So right now we have about, from a low of about 40 women suppliers, we probably have now about 160 or so who have been pre-qualified to be able to do business. 46 of them are now actively doing business with Safaricom in uh, key categories for us. And uh, those 46 are then mentoring other women in, um, in, in the different categories so that we have a lot more women moving forward.